Cool. Well, uh, thanks everybody for joining us this evening. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, everybody taking some time. I know that there's a lot of folks out there that um, are spending way more time on um, virtual meetings and Zoom presentations. So um, I'm glad that we're able to uh, meet this evening and hopefully uh, we're gonna get you some information that will help you out um, with your classes and your implementation of music first. Uh, my uh, main objective and goal is for everybody to walk out with at least one um, good idea. That's kind of the way that I view most uh, seminars and sessions is, you know, you're probably not going to be able to capture absolutely everything that um, George and I present and talk about uh, this evening and say, oh my gosh, I'm going to take all of it and use it because there's going to be some things that might not um, relate specifically to what you're um, needing. Um, but do know we're recording this. So if there is something that uh, you miss uh, as we go by, um, you can definitely uh, get a copy of the recording uh, of this presentation and we'll, we'll share it with you and share ideas and um, we're, we'll we're happy to do that. Uh, so my name is Mike Olander. Uh, for many of you, we've exchanged emails, um, possibly met at conferences in the past or had phone conversations or Zoom meetings. Um, once again, thanks for joining us. Uh, on behalf of the Music First team, we're thrilled to be working with you guys and partnering with you and hopefully uh, making an impact and engaging your students um, really, uh, that's the, the, the biggest thing that uh, really drives everybody at Music First is um, the students, and we all love it when we hear those success stories of, uh, you know, teachers that have implemented uh, some of our resources and it's impacted uh, a student's life and, uh, you know, seeing that student smile when they accomplish something that they've been struggling with or working hard to master. Um, so joining me tonight, we've got George Andercrocus. I probably badgered it, George. Um, but, uh, you know, he is a, a, an educator in Illinois that I've gotten to know through some email exchanges and some conversations in a Zoom meeting as well. Um, he is not on staff with Music First. Um, he actually uh, is just like the rest of you. He is an educator that is in the trenches, that is working through this unusual academic year and utilizing Soundtrap with his students. And he's volunteered his time to kind of share some uh, of his uh, learnings and his best practices with you all. So tonight we're going to focus on Soundtrap uh, with performance ensembles and uh, just know that we are also going to be offering some future um, presentations that are going to be specific to various elements of the Music First classroom and or highlighting specific software titles. So if you're interested in those, you know, definitely keep your eye out uh, on some emails. If you're um, in uh, one of my states, uh, you'll definitely see some of that from me. All right, um, I am going to uh, go to the next slide here. Um, here's our agenda, what we're gonna try to cram in in less than an hour. Um, so George is gonna talk fast and uh, really engage you guys and um, dazzle you. So the first things, uh, you know, obviously, hey, how, are, how do you get started? What are some ideas? Um, what are some best practices for how to introduce and get students familiar with using the software and get in there? Um, the next thing, this is really a, a common thing that I see a lot with people that are new to using Soundtrap is really talking a little bit about the two different types of projects and student work that you can do. One is a task where you make a copy and each student basically has a photocopy of a worksheet and they're working on that individually and they're submitting that in. That's gonna be a task. Um, the other aspect is doing a collaborative project where you've got multiple students that are working together on the same file. So this is kind of think about it like a Google Doc where you've got multiple people being able to log in and work on the same file. Um, so those are going to be, you know, a, a real key highlight there for you. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how George is using uh, Soundtrap with those large ensembles. We're going to talk a little bit about how to do virtual ensemble recordings. Um, and I've got a tip there on uh, how to easily do it without getting into having to run and use a, a video editor um, using Zoom. And then um, George has some ideas there on, on some best practices, how, what he's also done with uh, his jazz ensembles. So he's going to kind of dig into that a little bit and share some use cases um, with you and some projects he's done there. 
Uh, and then digging into like the solo and the ensemble and the chamber groups, you know, those smaller ensembles and uh, some projects and ideas that he's got going there. And then also kind of overall, uh, you know, what are you working on in terms of teaching practical skills, things that, you know, you, you might have taken for granted when you were in person and working with those students all the time. Um, this, you know, having this opportunity to kind of step back and maybe pivot some of your instruction and some of the things that he's done there, and then leaving some time for some Q&A at the end. All right. So in terms of like a couple housekeeping things for um, the presentation today, I am doing the recording uh, of this. Uh, so as long as technology cooperates with me, if you want, um, you know, I will um, record and send out a link. Uh, if you aren't uh, already, if you haven't requested it from me, feel free to just shoot me an email, mike at musicfirst.com and just tell me, hey, can I get a copy of uh, the recording of the meeting? And I'll happily send it probably early next week just to keep you uh, up to date. And we've also got the recordings of the past um, meetings that we've done. Um, I'm going to ask just uh, in terms of bandwidth things, a keep your camera off and um, leave your microphone muted, but you can use the chat box. So if there's some questions that come up, uh, you know, feel free to type them in the chat box. I'll be monitoring that while George is talking. Um, and then during the q and I'll kind of recap those for you guys as well. Cool. Um, in terms of a couple great uh, go to reminders, uh, just for everybody's sake, you know, this is this is some stuff you guys probably already know and have heard and, and maybe are, are very familiar with. But the first is, hey, there's a lot of self help already built into the music first classroom. So when you're logged into the music first classroom, uh, at the top right hand side, there's this header, and there's this little question mark icon next to your name, that question mark icon is where you find our user user guide and your tutorial. I know everybody doesn't want to read the user guide, but believe me, there's actually a lot of very valuable stuff and it's really broken down into bite-sized chunks and those tutorial videos there too on a variety of topics, not just what we're talking about today. Um, our support team, um, anytime you encounter any error message, you have a how do I, or you need to phone a friend is what I call it. Hey, always reach out to that, uh, that support team, support at musicfirst.com. They are fantastic if you haven't worked with them. Um, Juliana and Tori um, are the primary folks that are responding on those messages. They are fantastic. Um, when you do have error messages, um, typically I say the more information you can provide to the support team, the better. So make sure that you're including the website address for your particular implementation. If there's a specific task or student that's having an issue, including like either the link for the specific task or the class that's having a problem or the specific user, maybe even a screenshot of that so that they can, you know, help address that and uh, clear that up for you as quick as possible. Um, and then the education managers, which is my role. Um, if you're not sure who your education manager is, right on our website under the contact us page. We're here to help with any proposals. So if you need to add additional seats, add additional software to your implementation, need a budget proposal for next year because you're already thinking about 21 because you're like, I'm done with 20. Let us know. We're here to help. All right. Last thing that I'm really going to kind of walk through is um, the uh, my tips, which I say I am functionally dangerous. Um, so the first thing is uh, hey, when you're starting out, my recommendation is to do a to-do task. So when you're in your implementation, uh, create a task, call it a to-do, not a music first software, but change that from a music first software to a to-do task. And in there, just explain to the students, hey, I want you to simply launch Soundtrap from the software tab. And the reason why you do this is because we don't own so uh, Soundtrap. Soundtrap is owned by Spotify. So um, by doing that, what you're doing is you're creating the user account inside of Soundtrap so that it knows who everybody is. And that's needed for you guys to do the collaborative projects that you're going to be interested in. So, you know, hey, that's a great first step is just kind of saying, hey, just launch the software. Literally click on the software tab as a student, click on Soundtrap, open it, play around, see what you like, cool, and then you're done. That's it. Um, for collaborative projects, 
Um, the one thing I've had some people that have told me uh, if they're trying to do their entire like marching band or their entire, uh, you know, concert band and it's, you know, 80 kids, if everybody's in the, the same collaborative project at the same time, you kind of want to be careful because students do have the capabilities to affect um, not only what they're working on, but also what the other students, if they're seeing the other parts that are already there. So just a little bit of careful um, uh, carrot, you know, reminder for you guys, be careful how many students are working in a collaborative project at the exact same time. And I think George is going to talk about that a little bit too. Um, and then finally for virtual performances, if administration or if um, teachers, uh, you know, if you're hearing from um, other staff or parents that are saying, I saw this cool thing that somebody else did, why aren't you doing it? Hey, a great way for you guys to do a virtual performance where your groups sound great is to use Soundtrap to capture all the audio. You can export it as a, as a wave or an MP3 file. Then if you wanted to do the virtual where they've got, you know, the video, hey, an easy way without having your students do all the individual videos and you have to aggregate them and then line them all up so they're all starting at the exact same time and then do all the cool video effects all of that stuff nah. save yourself some time just do a zoom meeting like this all you have to do is tell your camera students hey have your cameras on have your microphones muted you set it up that you're going to record the meeting and then you play the mixed audio. So it's already gonna be mixed and it's gonna sound good. So you don't have the kid with the saxophone that's you know, honking right on the, on the, on the built-in microphone in the Chromebook and it sounds really distorted. It's already mixed and it's gonna sound good. And you're basically just gonna have the Brady Bunch you know, version of all of the students' faces on the screen. They can either play or they can mime, You know, doesn't matter. But that's an easy way for you to capture the video based on you guys already having access to Soundtrap and having it mixed and sound good. Cool. All right. So uh, to close my portion, I just wanted to say again, thanks. Um, thank you for your business. Thanks for trusting Music First. Thanks for joining us this, this evening. And uh, we really do you know, want to hear from you. So if you have suggestions for future webinars that you think would be helpful, um, if there are uh, you know, questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. If you've got questions specific for George, you can still relay them through me and I would be happy to share those. Awesome. All right. Without further ado, because you guys didn't want to come here to listen to me, I am going to turn this over to George. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Mike, thank you and Music First for uh, hosting this and putting this together. I'm honored to be uh, considered to even do this. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to share, you know, what we've been doing. And it, it, I think it'll be a, I think it'll be, um, it, it'll be good for me to get a uh, first webinar under my belt. But then also um, just to kind of show some things and, and, and um, promote thought and how we can uh, best, you know, meet the needs of our kids. And just thank you to everybody who is here and uh, going to be watching this. I really appreciate the support. Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful because ultimately, like I said, our, our kids are going to benefit from this. Um, so I'm just going to share my screen and we'll get started. Um, so tips and tricks. Uh, and be best practices, I, you know, I use air quotes with best practices, but just things that we're doing that I, that I feel seem to work, um, have seen work and uh, will be doing. Um, but yeah, tips and tricks, best practices using Soundtrap. And um, so the quick overview, uh, just to kind of echo your, some things that Mike had covered already, we're, I'm going to be covering um, and just out, some outcomes. What are you going to take away from today? Uh, different project types, virtual ensembles. He he covered a little bit about that. Um, jazz and other ensembles, solos and ensembles. Um, some self-reflection things that can go on. And then uh, I put a little thing at the end: of random important things. Um, save the best for last there. Uh, and then something I'm looking forward to is the Q and A, uh, having that dialogue, that conversation um, with you guys. So I think that's going to be very valuable. So. Um, about me, George Andrakogas, I'm in my 14th year of teaching. I'm at Hinsdale Middle School in Illinois, in Hinsdale, Illinois. Um, I currently co-teach 6th, 7th, and 8th grade band and, uh, and jazz ensemble, and I'm also the vice president of the Illinois Grade School Music Association, IGSMA. Uh, I live in Lombard with my wife and, uh, and two kids, and my wife's an educator as well, uh, teaches 6th grade, um, and uh, she's a trumpet player, so she's hard on me about my, my uh, brass, anything brass. Um, and the, the development of my brass players. She'll be the first to always let me know. Um, but uh, the outcomes for today is just, just to echo what, uh, what Mike said is take away one idea, trip, uh, tip, trick, 
uh, to promote. And basically, if, if something I say, you're like, oh, wow, that would apply. I mean, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to try it this way. That's amazing. That's awesome. And I, I kind of want to know what you're doing, too, because that's how we, we learn from each other. Um, and or I just maybe will be validating something you're already doing or thinking about doing. So hopefully you'll find this uh, helpful. Um, so using a DAW. So Soundtrap is a digital audio interface and it's like the dream come true for me. When I grew up, I had a, you know, I, I played in rock bands and it was like thousands of dollars and multi-track recording and things like that. And here you have it on your computer and it sounds awesome. Uh, and it's so easy to use. Um, and I found one of the best ways to connect this to the kids is like, hey guys, Soundtrap is like GarageBand or Pro Tools or Logic. But most of my students like they figured out, you know, GarageBand, and they're like, oh, that's awesome. And I'm like, think about GarageBand, but it has that collaborative feature, kind of like a Google Doc. And they're like, what? You can do that? And it's like, yeah, check it out. Um, and it focuses on recording, composition, loops. Um, and pre it, what I like is it focuses on building practical skills like recording, reflection, self-evaluation. We want our kids to listen to themselves perform. Uh, we want them to go back and fix things. We want them to be critical um, a lot of times with performance software, performance assessment software, we're actually, we're demanding the, our students to be like one take musicians, you know, in, uh, in a studio, uh, only it's, it's assessing them. Um, but they haven't gone through that process of learning how to play their instrument and perfect it. It's, it's this whole, um, it, it sort of um, muddies the water a little bit in that our, we're expecting our students to play perfectly. Um, with something that's imperfect. Uh, and, and so it's, it, it, it kind of, there, there tends to be a struggle sometimes. So with performance assessment software, um, there's two things that happen typically, and hopefully you guys will, um, you, you, you'll be able to empathize with this. There's the student that you have that is gung ho, they want to get 100%. They have their five minute piece, and they're going to play all the way through and then they miss the last note. And they're like, Oh, no, I missed, I missed it. Oh, let me go back and do it again. And then they miss it again. And they're getting 99%. They really want 100%. And what that does is that, and they might just not get it because of an algorithm or something. But they're all of a sudden now, now they're building frustration. Now it's frustration. And so we don't want that to happen. The other thing that I found that happens with my students specifically, and is complacency. So now all of a sudden we go from that, I want to get a hundred percent to, you know what an 80 will do. It's okay. No big deal. And using a DAW, you can get that hundred percent because you get to record. And if you make a mistake, it saves the good stuff and you can edit out the bad stuff, punch in, re-record, and it saves all of your progress. And then okay, well, that's not what we do in performance, George. That's not real. But then, okay, add another track and play along with yourself. And now the students are listening to themselves. They're reflecting. They're getting better. They're getting a lot of reps, um, maybe in an isolated part of a piece of music that they're struggling with. Um, it, there's just a lot of positives uh, to using a DAW as a performance assessment tool. Um, and you know what? I per Personally, I plan on using it uh, beyond this school year. Um, you know, this, this school year right now, we're hybrid and um, with some remote students, but this, is, this has a lot of merit. Uh, using Soundtrap has a lot of merit um, for a, a performance assessment and ways we think about um, listening to our students and collaborating and all that, that sort of stuff. So um, I wanna do just a, a little bit of talking through like how I introduce it to students. And I put director high stakes and student low stakes. And what I mean by that is that when, you, when you show this to students, it is so high stakes. It's really important that you as a director um, go through this and practice with it. You go through and you know every in and out about this program. You know, understand uh, how things work in terms of sharing, You're going through this webinar and seeing some of the ins and outs, some tricks and things, um, actually going through it and uh, with your colleagues or friends or call me up. I'd love to participate in these things um, to play and do a virtual collaboration, you know, and see how it actually functions in real time because um, if you present it to the students and it fails, there's a good to fair chance that they're going to kind of get scared or turned off by it when it could be such a powerful tool. So what I said by student low stakes is we want to make sure that students have this high stakes director that is they're, they're going through every, every leaving no stone unturned. And for the students, their assignments with this to begin are very low stakes. 
let them play, let them have fun, let them explore, let them you do some uh, artificial intelligence beats and um, what do you call it? And, and make their voice sound like a baby or a cookie monster, or, you know, with a ton of echo, like let them do it. It's fun and it's, it, it, will, it will hook them into it. So I'm just gonna show you uh, a couple, like one little thing that I did uh, with my students um, in Soundtrap. Um, so I'm gonna swipe over here. And so what I did was I, I walked them through how to get into music first. We opened up a project. I explained all of these starting music. They would rename their, uh, rename their song, um, test song or fun fact. And then we, we, I literally walked them through your voice and your instrument are going to be a microphone. So sometimes the kids will be like, Oh, I'm a woodwind. And, but this is for MIDI stuff. And I explained that, that you could have sequencers and all that. this, this is a very powerful program. So starting with the microphone, um, and I literally just walk them step by step. I show them the computer mic enhancer, um, how it changes their voice. We kind of go over reverb and pan and what that does um, and, and go through it. And all I did for the first one was a fun fact. So for instance, I did this. I, I lie in Soundtrap though. I say wear headphones, but then uh, you, you want to tell, tell um, Soundtrap that you're not wearing headphones. So I tell the students lie to the program, but you always want to use uh, headphones. And then we're going to record and I'm just going to record a fun fact. Hey, my name is George. And a fun fact about me is that I could say the alphabet faster backwards than I can forward. Z-Y-X-W-V-T-S-R-Q-P-N-L-K-G-F-E-D-C-B-A. And there we go. And then I play this back for him. So that I could say the alphabet faster backwards than I can forward. Z-Y-X-W-V-T-S-R-Q-P. And I'm like, KJ. And they're just like blown away, right? So then I'm like, all right, well, that's cool. And then I go through and I'll throw in a beat. And I'll just, I'll just demonstrate this and let them do it with me. And I'll go auto-generate, AI generator. And things, you know, do take a little bit of time to load, but again, just to stress how important it is that you have a, uh, you know, that the, that this is a very powerful program and uh, they need to close out all of their tabs that they have open. Um, and so from there, we'll have them build a track. And really all I'm looking for is that they're exploring with this, uh, with this software. From there, they, I teach them how to export it and download it and attach it to Google Classroom or Music Source. Okay, and so we get to see what that beat generator was. Hey, my name is George and a fun fact about me. You know, and, and so they just have a good time with it. And it's not, you know, it's not performance, it's not high stress, but they get in the habit of going through this and, uh, and messing with the different preamps and, and you know, seeing what, what they all sound like. Um, and, and, and things like that. Going, going in here and, and having fun with the effects um, is, is a lot of fun for them. So that's, that's how I introduce it to my students is they, it's a very low stakes uh, performance. Uh, basically, it's just them talking and getting used to using the program and they turn it in for a grade. Um, so there are in, in Music First, there are two types of uh, projects. There's tasks and collaborative. Uh, collaborative is where we will have a project like this and I will invite everybody, all of my students, okay? It'll save and then I'll invite my students right here to join, okay? Um, and then they'll all be on this, um, th this, this track. Any edits I make and any edits they make, I will see. But when you do a task in Music First, it, what it does is it creates, as Mike said, is like a, is a template for each student, okay? So what you, just to, how to, how to do that is you create, create a task and um, you're gonna add, I'm gonna just say it's for, uh, for jazz band and it's uh, test and it's music software, go to Soundtrap, test and a due date is just a random date. We'll pick that, um, assign to all in the class, that's fine. And then, and then create the task. Now, this, this process is pretty cool. If you haven't done it, um, I'm not sure where everybody's at with this. So I just want to go through it because I think it's really important. Is open in Soundtrap. And what we're looking to do is create a template for the students. So I want to go through and set everything up. So all they have to do when they log in is click the button and their project opens up and it's ready, uh, it's ready to go. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm actually not gonna click new. I'm gonna click off to the side, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna add a mic track and, um, I, and, and for right now, that, that's all. And I'm gonna save it. And so when the students log in, it's gonna be set up for them. Then I go to file and attach to task test. That's the name of the title. Uh, that's the name of the uh, project. Attached to the task. And now every student has that ready to go. So I'll show you what that looks like. So if I log into my, uh, my student account here, you'll see that I have a task. And the task is test. And when I open, now I'm the student now, so I open up in Soundtrap, what does Mr. A have for me? And then boom, everything I put in, which for right now was just a mic, just for this, for this example, was just a, a microphone. It's all there for me. I can start recording and it's, it's, very, it's very simple. That process is very easy. We wanna make it as easy as possible for the kids when, it, when there's stakes involved. So when it's for a grade, when it's performance, but that low stakes, let them play around with it. Let them make mistakes, let it, let it be fun. But then when you get into it, make it as easy as possible and tasks are a great way to do that. So um, we can ask, you can have questions uh, about this if there's anything uh, you wanna know uh, at, at the end. Um, so then again, collaborative is just gonna have everybody on the same project. And what's nice is students can invite other students and that's, that's a lot of fun too. So large ensembles, um, virtual ensemble creation, recording a mi and mixing an audio in Soundtrap. I wanna play a recording of, of something that was done professionally by professionals um, with really good gear in Soundtrap, uh, like kind of a synchronous, asynchronous full recording of a jazz chart. This was recorded and mixed in Soundtrap. And it's a word. Okay, so it sounds to me like when I when I listen to that, it sounds almost just as good as one of those demo recordings that you would have on a publisher's website. Um, and that was created in there and I'll show that to you. Um, so for the vir virtual ensembles, you can use this audio. Uh, it's very high quality. It comes a wave or an MP3, and then you can dump it into Final Cut or Wii Video, whatever you're using. Or what's really cool is what Mike was talking about is doing the virtual ensemble using Zoom or a Google Meet, um, where you have all of the squares, and then you as the director are kind of like in the control room, moving students around, clicking on their on their square, making it large, um, and you don't have to learn any video editing software and you can focus on making the music and doing the audio which is really what we like to do anyway so the video is nice but the audio is where it's at i think because it's a really good representation of what they're doing so jazz and other large ensembles so band choir orchestra i'm going to look at it from a kind of a, a band uh, perspective jazz perspective um for the dot we use it for individual playing assessments um, individual playing assessments with backing tracks or a model. So I'll, I'll demonstrate, I'll show you some of those. Um, we do section recording sessions. So for instance, I'll take all the saxes in my jazz band. I'll say, all right, guys, we got to rehearse uh, measure one through 20, get it done by eight o'clock tonight or something. Um, and they can all log in at the same time. They could do it in rehearsal. Um, and it's the, the, the best part of this is when you you can hear the individual in the bigger picture. And what I mean by that is performance assessment software is cool because you get to hear the students like, well, how do I know what my students sound like? Well, you, you listen to them, you have all that data. But with a DAW like this, you get to hear them in the context of the other players that they're playing with. Even though it's not perfect, it's very, very good. So you can tell if Timmy and Sarah, like they clash in Soundtrap. Well, guess what's happening in your ensemble? It just gets covered up by other things. So you can absolutely hear what they sound like in real time, you know, together. And you could realize like, oh, well, maybe the issue is like, Sarah plays flat all the time. I, but I would never know that because I'm only hearing her by herself. So just some little things to think about, like how that could help you and help your students hear it too, because then you could bring it to them and show them, 
look, did you guys hear that? Now let's try and fix it. Um, and then the other, the other thing is uh, live synchronous or asynchronous recording sessions uh, with the sections or full ensemble. So I'll show you kind of what we did, um, which kind of led to this whole webinar happening with uh, Mercy, Mercy, Mercy and my uh, jazz ensemble in rehearsal. We had 16 players all recording at the same time. Um, we come, came back and recorded, uh, fixed them, listened to it, reflected, went back, took 10 minutes, recorded their parts, and then we got this final product for a rehearsal purpose, not for a final product. Um, so there's some little errors and things like that in there. Um, now, uh, solos and ensembles, again, I'm going to show you all of these things, and then we'll have time for questions. Um, individual playing assessments, we talked about that. Improvisation, for the first time, I don't know about you, but uh, t rehearsal time is limited, in, especially for jazz. And so now you can have all of your kids be soloists. You can have three drummers playing at the same time. It, it, for, now, for the first time, it doesn't matter how big your ensemble is because you can have all of a couple players playing multiple parts or you can have the whole band play. Um, but for improvisation, now the kids can record themselves. They can listen to themselves and be like, oh, wow, that was a great, man, I had a great idea. Save it, all right? Now go back to that, listen to it. Um, transcriptions, um, you can, I have a student right now who's working on uh, Dexter Gordon cheesecake and he's working on the transcription. He can slow the MP3 down without changing the pitch all in this program. So, he, and he's gonna get familiar with it and he's gonna get better at it. And then he slowly speeds it up. So I'll, so I'll show you that. Uh, compositions, um, just regular compositions. Students can write songs, record songs, doing loops and things like that and beats. That's a lot of fun. Um, and then I call it individual chamber music, which what we're doing uh, is going to be we're, we're doing some holiday tunes and we have some duets and we have a model track and the students are going to play duets with themselves, which is fun. And I've seen a lot of people doing that, which is great. Um, and then collaboration among students. So you give give a students a, a set of duets, maybe for solo and ensemble and or a trio, and they they collaborate with each other, sharing the project back and forth. Um, and building it together. So there's just so many options for you. Um, and hopefully you're hearing, seeing some of these or land, you're like, wow, that's a good idea. Or, well, what about this? And that's, that's what we're hoping for. Um, again, self-reflection and feedback. It's a running document in a chat format, which is cool. And I'll show you that. A live video conferencing on the app, which is kind of, sort of like Zoom. I, this helped me a lot in the spring with students when I was still learning how to use the program. And uh, they were too, so we were kind of like troubleshooting, but I was able to see them in real time and talk while they were syncing, and we kind of did a lot of troubleshooting that way. Um, students can share materials with the teacher and other people. This right here, guys, is the, I, this is like the dream come true for me, is that I would normally have students with performance assessment software play the things that I assign. And it's like, oh man, but I really wish you would just like explore a little more. There's a ton of literature on there. And they never did, and they never did. Or if they did, they never. I was never able to tell. And the thing is, now they can, and they can share it with you. So I want to show some things that that my students were sharing with me, um, and it promoted that because it's this program is accessible, accessible for everyone. Um, and then files can easily be exported to whatever LMS you're using, so Google Classroom, um, Canvas, and other. Okay. So let me just show you some things because um, I know you, it was like a lot of talking. Now let's like, okay, we'll back it up. Um, so here's that example of what this was that test. This was a, um, just a, a task and I could make it collaborative if I wanted to by sharing or, or not. I could just have it, every individual student have their own, um, have their own project. So this is, this is that one recording, Ace of Hearts. Uh, it was mixed here um, and here we go. Now I can listen to just the drums if I want. And that's, you know, how, how awesome is that? Where you actually get the, you get the inside, you know, behind the scenes look at what that sounds like. Now, I want you to pay attention to something uh, that the waveforms are very thin here. Um, and that's the goal is we want really clean waveforms. And even if I kind of blow it up a little bit, they're still very slender and look really clean. And that's what we're aiming for uh, with, our, with our students. We want to show them that. Okay. Um, here's Mercy, Mercy, Mercy. This was that track. 
Um, what I do is I create a master track here um, and so that they, they play along with it. And I add a click in front. And just to show you really quick, that click, I did that in soundtrack, okay? So I, I you know, that's maybe for another time where we can get more into the weeds on this program. Um, it, it was so easy to do. Um, and then I just re-imported it and made it a click so that the students can all start together. And, you know, here's that result um, of, the, here's the, the whole jazz band playing in a, for rehearsal their run through. So now I know exactly what they sound like. And I think it'll even be better when they're in person. I just want to bring this to your attention. If you look at the waveforms, you can tell which students um, have, and I'm going to go over this random facts, but you can tell which students are using their Chromebooks and you can tell which students are using their, uh, the, like they maybe they have a, a, a USB mic. Um, and the waveforms are significantly smaller. And listen to the difference here. Um, Whoops, uh, I'll, I'll mute the rest of these because you'll be able to hear it. it yes, it is in some in some ways it is the the player in proximity to the to the microphone, but also just hearing one. You know that's that is a that that's a very um that's a, almost a very distorted sound. Here's a here's a microphone. Um, this is a Chromebook as well. but it still sounds good, right? And then here's a USB mic. Okay, now if, if you're thinking, well, that's, that's really quiet. Well, what I can do is I can enhance that by bringing up the volume here and going into some of these effects. And this is what I'm talking about is like knowing how to really work this program. Okay, so I'm able to adjust those things and mix very detailed if I want to. Um, but you can hear the the clarity uh, difference, and I'll show you an example of that in a little bit. But that's you know that was a that was in a live rehearsal. This was recorded. Um, the conversation uh, I, I had over here, I but I dumped this into a different track to protect uh, anonymity for students. Um, but we're having conversations about how do, how do you do this? It won't work. You know, how, how do you fix this? And it was, we were able to do uh, quite a bit of troubleshooting together. Okay. Um, but this was all recorded on Chromebooks in a live rehearsal, uh, which is pretty amazing. And, and, and pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. And I know that it'd be a lot of fun uh, to put it together. Um, so now their, their assignment, just so you know, is by 12, eight, they need to record the whole thing. And I don't want them to do it live together. I want them to sit down and really get a good recording of this and just the best top notch, as clean as you can. We're going in the studio guys. We're going to make an album this year type of thing. And, and that's, and that's how we're working at it. And, and they're, they're taking it seriously. And I, and I couldn't be happier uh, with that. And again, here's that backing track that they play along with. Okay. Um, so now the improvisation piece, I just took a backing track from, um, you know, uh, from uh, just a play along. And um, I'll just show you what I do is I'll set it up as a microphone and I'll do this microphone test here. And I teach the students to use this. So then it's all, they always get like a really good, easy, even sound. Now, many of you will understand this, especially band directors. Um, when we have to teach our students to play how they're going to play when they record because when they go to tune, they'll like back off, you know, or play super loud. Like we want to play consistently. So uh, I'll tell them that and explain it. And then they'll do something like this. Okay. 
my wife would be so proud. Okay, um, and now I'm just going to record a little bit of uh, some Sunny Moon for Two live for you guys so you can see what that sounds like. to do now i can go in i can listen to it oh i didn't like that so now i'm gonna go back and i can punch in my part okay so let's try that i'm gonna start right here in the middle and now i have a, a like i have evidence of what i played so i can go back and i can even transcribe my own solo later Let's just see what that sounds like. And I'm not really happy with it, you know, but I can go back and I can refine it and make it cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. Okay. Um, and so that's, that's a lot of fun. Now I could have all of the students improvising at the same time. Okay. And, uh, and they could listen to each other. They could steal ideas. I mean, what a, what a cool collaborative thing that this could become uh, for improvisation. Um, and then Cheesecake uh, by Dexter Gordon. I have a student working on this one. Now, here's the recording. And there's, it's pretty quick. So what I can do is I can change the tempo from here. One, 120 is just uh, solid, uh, the regular tempo. But I'm going to just pull back uh, to like 96. So watch this. Now I'm going to adjust, audio adjust, boom. And now it's going to take a little bit to, to, to load this, but what it's going to do is it's going to take this whole file and it's going to make it longer and slower without really affecting the quality because it's already very high quality. And, um, the, uh, and so, the, so the students can slowly start to learn it or read it or, or, or learn to perform it. Okay, And so I'll demonstrate that in a, in a second as it loads. Um, and then here's an example I was saying of students that are submitting things to me that they're working on. And it's like, I had no idea that this student, she's an eighth grade French horn player. Um, and she's, she's just the, the, she's the best kid in the world. And I didn't know that she was that good at editing. Like, I mean, she's chopped this up in, in a very, very professional way. And I'll let you hear a little bit of that in a second. But she submitted that and shared that with me and said, Mr. A, check it out. And that's, that's the goal. That's what I want is that empowerment to, to, to do that. And, and I think what's awesome is Soundtrap provides that opportunity, that um, avenue for our students. Um, so let's give it a listen. So I slowed it down. Yeah, and it's, it's significantly slower. And I could even go slower if I wanted to uh, from there, OK? And let's give a listen to um, this duet that she's working on. She's clearly uh, still in the process of, of practicing it and, and refining it. Um, but here it is. And this was done uh, just a, a couple of days ago. <laughs> Now, what makes me happy is my conversation with her can be the same as it would be with like a studio musician. Hey, we need to check our proximity from the microphone. Not here's how you play your instrument. No, she's doing a great job of that. But here's here's some ways that you could record to get a better sound because you could hear the clicking of the keys and things like that. Well, let's set ourselves up this way. Or maybe because we're playing the same and we want it to sound better um, so that the room doesn't double up on ourselves. Why don't you set yourself up like you would in a real real scenario where you play to the left 
play first part, move the microphone to the right where the other person would be, and then play from there. And now you're getting that it's going to still be you, but it's going to give this illusion that there's two players uh, playing. So little tricks like that. Um, and we can have those conversations. And that's really exciting. And that um, it goes so much beyond just playing the notes and rhythms on the page. We're talking about recording. Uh, and and it's, these are very valuable skills. Okay. Um, so um, looking forward to any questions. Uh, I do want to share some random important things. Okay. So using an interface or a USB microphone, I've been forcing my students <laughs> to get USB microphones. And here's why, because this is not going away. We're going to use it. It's going to be software. It helps with other performance assessment software. Um, it helps with their zoom calls and their schooling and everything. They're clearer. Um, and I just want to show you, this is featuring Eric Morong, who I think is on this call from Clarendon Hills. And this is a demonstration live Zoom because you never really hear yourself on a Zoom. Um, and we did a we did a little recording this summer to check it out. And I think you're going to be blown away as to why. If you want to, if you want this video, I'm sure Eric would be cool with me sharing it to you. Like, why should I get a USB microphone, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. So and So? Uh, this is the reason. So check it out. And um, this is amazing. I um, strongly encourage it. This is what it sounds like with the microphone. Check, testing, testing, one, two, three. Yep. And now this is what it sounds like without the mic, uh, without the microphone. Checking, checking, chest, one, two, three. So, I, I mean, that I think that, that like 30 seconds, 45 seconds, like explains it all. It's worth the investment and you can get, you do not need to buy a very expensive microphone. You can get a, a $39 one. You can get an interface. I think it's a little much for middle school students. I think we just want to do a plug and play. Um, but, you know, there's, there's some microphones for $29. Any microphone, honestly, is going to be better than maybe what they have on their, uh, on their Chromebook. Um, but what's really cool, we'll talk about preamp settings, is that Soundtrap has those preamps in there to make things sound a little bit better uh, to capture a better sound. Um, close out your browsers tabs, uh, kids. I Every time I was like, guys, you got to close out YouTube and everything. You know, you see mine. I have a bunch open, but like they're uh, running on their Chromebooks. It just has such a powerful, it's such a powerful program. Make sure that they, they close everything out and just remind them consistently. Um, freezing tracks and sound quality settings. I, I had a lot of students log in at the same time, uh, 16, and it was like, but what, what's going on? And no problems um, with latency or anything except for if something froze, I would just say like start it over, close out everything and log back in. And that usually fixed the problem. It's the old uh, turn it off and turn it back on again. Um, but then there is, some, there is a trick that you, um, you should do is under settings, is we wanna go under sound quality. We wanna to go to extra low or low. High is like really high quality. It sounds awesome. But again, it's running your computer super hard. Um, and those Chromebooks sometimes, and uh, you know, MacBooks too, mine, uh, it, 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 it sometimes can't handle that much, especially if you're dealing with something like, with, like this. Okay. Um, and then uh, preamp settings, sorry, uh, preamp settings, it sounds so good. This software, sorry about that, making you dizzy. Um, it sounds so good. And the kids can uh, experiment. When I set up my tracks, I always use dry so that when the, after they've recorded, I'll switch it over to something like computer mic enhancer that has a little bit of reverb to soften it up, make it sound a little bigger. And just the, the, their, their eyes go, you like get big because they'd never heard it that way before. Um, and it just, it sounds so good to them in larger than life. Um, explore those, uh, those pre preamps and mic settings um, and effects and what they do. Um, a quick Google search or some YouTube tutorials can talk about compression and EQ and what they can do for your sound um, and miking techniques and things like that um, that are super accessible for students. So um, just a couple little things there. And um, I, I think we have about 10 minutes for, for questions, uh, which is perfect. And uh, I hope this was helpful, guys. And if, I'm just looking forward to hearing uh, and asking questions and uh, hearing what you have to say. And thank you so much for uh, your support and listening to me ramble on about all the things I love about Soundtrap and what we're doing with our kids.
Awesome. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, George, uh, again, for, you know, taking some time here. Um, so here are a couple questions. Uh, and, and I'm just going to kind of recap you, you know, uh, re uh, emphasize or, uh, you know, rehash what what people are asking. Uh, one of them was when you're introducing uh, Soundtrap, you, you mentioned that you tell the students to um, say that they're not wearing headphones, even though they are. Can you explain um, the reason behind that? Sure. Uh, so up front, we, we want to make sure that the kids are always using their headphones when they record, just because then the, the other sound from maybe their computer is not bleeding in uh, to the software or the microphone. But what it's doing is what, what Soundtrap is asking you to do is, is a thing called internal monitoring. And monitoring meaning you're going to be able to monitor your own sound. So sometimes there's a little bit of latency. And that can really throw you off. So if you hear yourself and it's like just a millisecond late, um, that can really throw the student off. So what that does is it, um, it, it turns that off. And so that the students will not be able to hear themselves in the, in the, in the headphones. They'll be, they'll be able to hear it afterwards, but just not while it's happening. Okay. Um, and let me show you really quick. I'll just do a quick screen share. So if, for instance, if that, if you run into that problem uh, with your students, um, what you can do is you could just go into settings and you could turn monitoring on or turn monitoring off rather. Right now it's off because I said that I'm wearing headphones, but I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I'm not using them right now. Um, so that's why it's the monitoring uh, setting. This is good though. Monitoring is good to checking levels. Um, so if you get a student that's more advanced and they want to make sure that they're in the right spot, they can hear themselves and then turn that off. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully that answers your question. Um, but that's, that's why we do it because we don't want to get feedback and I don't want to disrupt, um, make the students feel weird about their performance because they might hear things differently. Yeah. Uh, there was a, a question and, and this actually might end up being more on the tech support side, but, um, there was a question asking about when you're doing a collaborative project and, um, being able to lock a track once it has a recording, because, you know, sometimes students go in there and even though they're not trying to be malicious, but they, um, modify another student's work or accidentally delete tracks. Um, now, obviously one fix, uh, George would be, you know, if you did it where everybody has their own copy and you're doing it as a task, and then you would actually take each individual student's part and just grab just their tracks. And then you as the teacher put in a separate project and drop them in. Uh, but when you're doing a collaborative project, uh, do you have any advice or ideas about either um, ways to prevent students from changing other students' files? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, the, the simple answer is train them. You know, teach them, let them know that like, this is your track, label it, label things clearly for them. Um, so that they go to it, get, um, mess around with the colors, you know, so maybe, uh, maybe a student's always blue. Like for instance, I always make my recording tracks, like my master tracks red. So the kids know like no one else is going to be red. That's the master track. Don't touch it. Um, but the, um, the nice thing about it is, and I let them know this, it's fail safe because you can always go back and, um, and, and go back to like previous versions of it. So let me show you really quick. Uh, let me find one that was done. Let's see. I can go back to the history of that here and it will, um, it'll, it'll say who made, who made edits when, and it's not, it's not doing that right now. Oh, I got to say this one. Um, so it'll, it'll show you the history and you can reload that if they, if they did make a mistake, um, it does happen. Um, but you can go back to that older previous version and it saves all of those so the, it, there's really it's no stress you know things happen mistakes happen but um train them and teach them uh that they need to arm their track and it's there make sure it's only their track that's recording um and just to be just be slow about the process you know until they get quicker but the, recording is not something that you just do um quickly like it takes it takes time it takes preparation so just get them in that habit of um you know i'm going to take my time and i'm going to really make this good and uh, another question was, uh, you know, that came up when you were talking about how you did um, the mercy, mercy, mercy and quote unquote live. Um, 
if you can just kind of explain the process, because from my understanding, it kind of sounded like it wasn't like a Google meet where everybody was, you know, recording and everybody pressed record at the exact same time, but it was um, something where everybody accessed the file at the same time and then came back together. If you can just kind of explain your workflow on that. Sure. Yeah. So we, we, we rehearsed, um, I had everybody in section. So we did that first and then we, you know, we listened to the recording. We played through it a couple of times, um, in our zoom, you know, rehearsal where we have everybody mute. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm getting to the point where I can have the students, uh, they think that I can hear them when they're muted. Cause I'm just starting to say things like, yeah, that F was a little flat. And they're like, huh? And then do it again. But, uh, so we went through that rehearsal process and then I said, all right, guys, I'm going to stay on the zoom. Everybody else is going to go into Soundtrap. You got 10, 10, 15 minutes. They'll meet me back here at, you know, 620. And, um, and they did. And if they needed to come back, I said, we'll talk in the chat. And if they needed to, um, if they needed a, a, another question, like a personal question, they just logged back in on the Zoom. And so they were all in Soundtrap at the same time recording. I said, make sure you save uh, and sync consistently. And then we all came back. Uh, from that, from there at like six, you know, six twenty or whatever, and we listened to it together and then made fixes. And I said, "All right, let's let, let's talk about that. Now let's go back and for another ten minutes re-record your part or fix things that you heard that were if errors or issues." Um, and then they they all joined back. So it was this floating back and forth between Zoom, logging off of Zoom, and then going on to um, on to Soundtrap and back. And we would we would talk in Soundtrap as well using that using the chat feature but what was so cool was seeing the kids helping each other you know and like i'm having an issue oh yeah we, where'd the master track go oh no just scroll up you know and they it was very it was very cool to see um but that's how it was it would think of it as they recorded in the same way that if there was a paragraph everybody had their sentence of the paragraph and they just had to put it in uh in the right spot um, and that's, that's how I would look at it. So no, they didn't all hit record at the same time. That is not what happened. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and, uh, you know, kind of going back to, you know, trying to make it as full or error proof as possible. I've had a couple teachers that have actually, when they create the collaborative projects, they pre-label all of the tracks for their students. Um, so that, you know, that way then the student is looking for just their last name and they already know where they're going. So that's another tip that I'll just, um, offer out there as advice for folks, um, couple other questions people were asking about, uh, you know, if you put in either the reference uh, tracks or a click track, um, as well as, you know, uh, some things about like getting um, audio or reference uh, audio from um, YouTube. I'll just mention, you know, from YouTube, you have to grab the audio because what you're putting in Soundtrap on um, the reference track, which is normally gonna be the top track in a project like George was showing, is going to be, um, I think the, the, the entry you can either do, is it wave MP3 or MIDI, George? Yes. Yep. So whatever you want the students to be playing along with, if you can put it in one of those three file formats, you can then uh, add that to your soundtrack project. Um, a, again, a nice thing that George showed how to slow down those um, audio reference files. So also think about like, if you're gonna use this with your ensemble, but they're not quite ready for performance speed, you can take that reference audio from a music publisher's website where they've got the MP3s. You download that, you upload that, and you can slow it down to something that, so that your students are being successful. Um, I'll just tell you, uh, you know, my kids school, I'm not going to throw anybody under the bus, but they're literally trying to play pieces sight reading at performance tempo and it's just setting the students up for not a great experience I'll just leave it at that. Um, so just something to kind of keep uh, in mind there. Um, uh, another question uh, asking about um, the large collaborative projects. So if, if you're trying to do it, what kind of tips or problems might you have with some of those large um, collaborative projects or your ideas? Um, George, I know you were talking about doing it by section. So maybe you can, you know, just kind of give a couple tips there. Definitely do, de definitely do it by section, but like, or, or in sections, let me say that. So if you have like your section leaders that you want to have together, um, and they, and that those section leaders are, are recording together to get like, uh, 
demo tracks for the rest of the section, or you can have all of your clarinets together or break them up like clarinet one, clarinet two. The, your, your options are um, limitless, ultimately. Any, anything you can think about, you can set it up uh, that way. Um, and what's really nice too is all of them at the same time is it, it could if you're doing 50 or more or 20 or more i mean even 16 is pushing it um at the same time um you can still have kids jump in and record just not at the same time so they could still be on the same project um and that and that's really helpful um the tip there is you want to freeze the tracks so that it saves up um computer uh computer usage okay and that's that's by just clicking the three dots on each track it says freeze track and it says saves computer um that uh, that will help in those situations. So what I'm thinking is you have your clarinets, but you have the saxophone player that's really good and he's gonna play with those clarinets. Like he can join that that uh, that project uh, without a problem. And it would and, and then record on Tuesday instead of with them all together. If that makes, I hope that makes sense. It helps. And then uh, you can also unfreeze those tracks if you need to as well, but from the same um, three dots on the individual tracks, correct? Yes. Cool. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Do, 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 do. Uh, there are a couple questions about just kind of account management. I mean, really, we're focusing on using Soundtrap for education um, and really talking about most of the stuff that Scott's talking about, you can do in a standalone implementation, but you know, he's obviously talking also about how it uh, works in partnership with the Music First Classroom because the user management is a little bit different um, in the classroom where you've got you know a suite of software that you guys are picking. Mm -hmm. um, all right, uh, can we download Practice First Tracks as master tracks in Soundtrap? Um, yes, uh, Susan, you need to go. Um, th that's that's kind of a Practice First question, but there's a way that you can. Uh, export or save audio from practice first and then uh you know it's just making sure that the file type for soundtrap uh is added and, and able to be there all right um you know mike i would love to i mean if, if people are interested in this you know at, at any given time any point um you know doing a live thing because like actually getting to do it together and try it you know with a few people or really getting into the nitty-gritty about like how are you setting these levels and things like that, which we I can touch on, but I, I can't really cover um, in a in in this. In, in, that wasn't the point of, of this uh, webinar, but you know, a future one. If people are interested in that, I'd love to you know partner up and and do that um, just to help everybody out and see who has questions and things like that, and I'll hopefully learn from others as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and like George kind of mentioned too, I mean, this is cloud-based software and you're not going to break anything, um, you know, so it's kind of nice just spend a little time and play around with it. And you'll actually be surprised as George has kind of pointed out too, that you'll have students that will find um, new capabilities and functionality out and they'll be, they'll, they'll actually be sharing it with you as well. So that's always pretty cool. Um, uh, the, there was a question also about doing the virtual ensembles. So, uh, you know, the biggest thing is, is, you know, work through the process, kind of like what George has talked about, about getting the students to record. Um, you can drag and move the, uh, the individual tracks so that you're putting all the flute parts together or all the alto voices together. And then you can, you know, kind of isolate that and mix them. When you're done and you're happy with the way that it sounds, just go under the file and the export to export the audio out of Soundtrap. And then you've got that great sounding audio. And then you can either, you know, do the video editor thing or the, um, I'm not going to call it cheating, but I'm going to call it the time effective uh, method of utilizing like a Zoom or a Google Meet where you can then um, just have the students play along miming with the good sounding audio that they've already recorded. All right. I saw a uh, I saw a question about how much time have you been spent teaching basic editing with your students. Um, honestly, it's not very much, and you don't you just teach them a few things like the the concept of punching in and punching out, what that means, and how, what the editing looks like, um, and then giving them a very simple example of how it would not work. You know, like using rests as a good point to punch in. So, for instance, uh, just I know we're over time. I just want to share this real quick. Um, 
the this example that I shared of mercy, 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 it looks like it's edited, but the the kids all just said, well, I'm not going to rest for you know eight bars or whatever. Like, let me just punch in. So you just giving them uh, examples of how it it could work, um, it work easily. Um, and then a, a way like where it, where it's, it's it's not functional, don't do it. So for instance, uh, playing a major scale and play, and trying to edit one note out of the passage, explaining that like that's not realistic, guys. Just get the whole chunk. Um, and so once once you explain that to them and they try it a couple times, it, it's more about them doing it and trying it with their with their voice. Even is I found is very effective. Um, just talking, you know, in speech and making it connect, um, but not a lot of time, a couple of classes. And then some students, they just, they, you know, they just run with it. You know, they're like, I want to edit every note. And it's like, no, 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 you don't, don't do that. But um, the, uh, it, it hasn't been a lot of time, a, a couple classes. And then the majority of it is kids playing around with the program on their own because they have it and they have access to it in that way. Um, one person asked if you could put back up the, um, the slide from your slide deck talk where you just kind of gave an overview of um, the oh, virtual performance. Sure, of course. Um, let me share. And since that's um, already been um, uh, captured on the recording here, I'm actually just going to stop the recording of the meeting so that uh, it